Life of Thai, Penguin Problems, Chapter 1. Today, my big sister Sandra is taking me to school. She pulls into the drop-off lane and tells me to walk in by myself. She says, Ty, you're seven years old. You can do this. I know, I say, because of course I can. I can do tons of things. When a spider needs rescuing in our house, I'm the one who does it. At school, on the playground, I'm famous for jumping from one wobbly mushroom thing to the next without falling. Also, I'm excellent at growing head hair, which is good because it means I'm not bald. I'm just not ready to go in this very second. It's more fun to sit in the car and watch for a while. Linnea's mom follows Linnea with a bakery box, which means it's probably Linnea's birthday, and she's going to give out cupcakes. My book partner, Price, runs ahead of his mom and tugs on the heavy glass door. Only, he's a preschooler, so his mom has to sneakily reach up high and help him. My other sister, Weenie, twists around in the front seat. She's younger than Sandra, but older than me. You like school, she reminds me. You'll get to see Lexi. You'll get to be bad, scary dry cleaners together. No, because bad, scary dry cleaners ended a long time ago, I say. Now, Lexi and I are boingies, which means we put our arms in our shirts and squat and hop all over the playground. Boingy, boingy, boingy. Lexi's friend, Breezy, is sometimes a boingy, only hardly ever. Breezy doesn't like me. Winnie says Breezy wants Lexi all to herself. Sandra honks. I jump. Tie out, she says. Now. She reaches back and opens my door. She shoves it so it swings open wider. Next, she shoves me on my bottom. Sandra, I cry. I scurry out but stick my head back in to say, Sandra, you are so mean. Bye, she says, pulling away from the curb. My heart races. She's not supposed to pull away Zoom without any warning. Fine, bye, I say. And you're not mean, not all the time. And Winnie, I blow a sneaky kiss, which boys are allowed to do. Catch it, I call. Did you catch it? Winnie leans out her window and grabs it out of the air. She pops it into her mouth. Mmm, butterscotch. She kisses her fingers and blows her kiss to me. I catch, swallow, and say, Ew, dried mouse droppings. Winnie laughs. Her hair whips into her face as Sandra pulls away, and then they're gone. Now I have to go inside. My stomach tightens. Not because I'm nervous. Because being nervous is babyish. Being nervous is for first graders or kindergartners. But it used to be that mom took me to school. She walked me all the way to my classroom and we did our goodbyes there. Then teensy baby Maggie came along. Then Sandra started driving me to school. For three whole weeks, she's driven me to school instead of mom. At first, she did walk me in. Either she would or Winnie would. Then today came along and bam, Instead of walking me in, Sandra shoved me on my bottom and Winnie let her. Price's mother comes out of the building, this time without Price. I don't think she knows I'm Price's book partner, but she smiles at me anyway. I give her a small smile back. She heads to her car and I bet she's thinking, why is that boy just standing there? Probably lots of people are thinking that. All the kids are going in, all the parents come in out. I could stand here forever, but I'd get all wrinkly and everyone would say, who's that old creepy dude who's always standing there? I start toward the door. Then I stop because I hear a noise coming from the playground, a kid noise. Only kids aren't supposed to be on the playground yet. I go to check it out. It's Price. He's saying, help, in a squinchy voice. And the reason why is because his head is stuck between two metal bars. I sigh. 
preschoolers. I go through the gate outside the playground, and it clangs when I pull it shut. Price tries to look over, but he can't, really. Hold on, Price, I call. I'm coming. My head got stuck, he cries. I know. There are steps leading from the slides to the monkey bars and by the stairs. There are rails that have metal bars. That's where Price is stuck. It's not the first time. I walk over, bend at the waist, and put my upside down face where he can see me. Ty, he says happily. He tries to stand, but it doesn't work. Ouch! Boy, I'm glad I'm not a preschooler anymore. Have you drawn any more pictures of Cyber Grape? Price asks. Cyber Grape is like Plankton from Spongebob, only bigger and purple. And I invented him. I drew a picture of him for Price, and now Price wants more and more. I also invented Robothing, who is Cyber Grape's best friend, but without as many superpowers. Price doesn't know about Robothing. I haven't drawn any Cyber Grape pictures this morning because this morning I'm rescu rescuing you, I say. Will you draw some more soon? Maybe. Now, stay. I tromp up the stairs. I tromp to the railing and kneel beside him. I reach the, through the bars, grab his head and twist, twist, twist until pop. He topples backward and lands on the seat of his jeans, which are the kind with elastic. He presses on his skull like he's pushing his brain into place. He looks at me with admiration, like how Robo Thing looks at Cyber Grape, probably. Huh, I haven't drawn that picture yet, but I should. Don't stick your head in there again, I tell Price. And even so, you're not supposed to be out here. You're supposed to be inside. I hold out my hand. His hand is sweaty, but I pull him up anyway. Come on, I'll walk you to your class.